It's no secret that we have all been extremely curious about spaceships ever since sci-fi movies introduced the concept of traveling into space, to planets, and even galaxies, so that we can explore the rest of our universe in an effort to travel once again with the speed of light. But as we get closer to reality, though, we realize that this kind of speed is almost impossible to achieve, and even if we could do so, we would not be able to travel that much further in space without even knowing how that would work. However, curiosity is the seed of innovation. So what happens if we are not able to travel through planets or galaxies, but we can travel through space in the near future? And that would be possible for almost everybody, not only for the rich. How? Well, let's find out in today's video. Also, if you like our video, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's free, and you can also get the bonus bell icon, which you can press to get early video updates. The first thing that should be pointed out is that this space tourism would be organized by Virgin Galactic. For those who do not know what Virgin Galactic is, let me explain that it is a space tourism company that intends to provide suborbital flights into space to paying customers starting in 2022. It was founded by Richard Branson, a British entrepreneur who specializes in the aerospace and music industries. There have been a number of times when the starting date of flights has been pushed back. Virgin Galactic was originally predicted by Branson to be flying customers into space by the year 2007. As a result of development issues, a fatal explosion that occurred during a ground test in 2007, as well as a tragic test flight crash that took place in October 2014, the program was delayed. As of December 2018, the company reached an important milestone when its VSS Unity test vehicle passed into space, at least according to one definition of the event. At the time of its launch, Spaceship 2, a model of the NASA rocket, reached an altitude of 51.4 miles, which is slightly above what the U.S. Air Force considers the boundary between the atmosphere of the Earth and outer space, when giving astronaut wings to its pilots. As a matter of fact, the most famous Kármán line defining where space begins is at a height of 62 miles. There is a possibility that Virgin will operate its private space flights out of the Spaceport America complex in New Mexico in the future but it also has signed an agreement with Abu Dhabi to develop a spaceport there. In the past few years, hundreds of customers have made deposits for space flights with the company. One of the biggest known names on the list, announced in 2012, is actor Ashton Kutcher, although rumor has it that a number of other celebrities have also signed on to the list, including Angelina Jolie, Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, and singer Katy Perry. However, there were a few people who backed out following the October 2014 crash. Virgin Galactic was registered as a company in 1999, three years after the Ansari X Prize competition was announced. The X Prize was awarded to the first non-governmental organization to successfully fly people into space twice using reusable spacecraft in a two-week period. And Branson sponsored Burt Rattan's scaled composites to compete for the prize in the 1960s due to his interest in spaceflight. Rattan's prize-winning vehicle was called Spaceship One. The spacecraft launched once in September and again in October 2004 from the carrier Aircraft White Knight to secure the X Prize. That same year, Virgin pledged to bring ordinary people into space if they could pay the reported price of $200,000 per seat. It was also in July 2005 when Branson and Rattan announced a joint venture between Virgin Galactic and Scaled Composites, which they named the Spaceship Company. Together, they were able to create a new generation of space liners, the Spaceship 2, which built on the technology of the Spaceship 1. The Spaceship 2 spacecraft is designed to carry six passengers and two pilots into space at a time. There was also a successor launch craft developed to White Knight, which was referred to as White Knight 2. In December 2005, the state of New Mexico officially offered Virgin Galactic a $225 million taxpayer-funded facility called Spaceport America where Virgin Galactic would have its world headquarters and can conduct test flights and space flights. However, it is expected that Virgin Galactic will rely on two aerospace manufacturers to supply the major components of its next generation suborbital space plane for the space tourism industry. Last November, Virgin Galactic announced that it had reached agreements with Bell Textron and Carbon Aerospace to build major sub-assemblies that will be used to assemble its Delta class of suborbital space planes for which Virgin Galactic will be responsible for the final assembly. 
As far as the value of the contracts was concerned, the companies did not disclose it. According to Swami Iyer, president of aerospace systems at Virgin Galactic, the suppliers were selected after a highly competitive and methodical selection process. As he said, he did not reveal how many proposals were submitted to the company's request for proposals. It has been confirmed that Carbon Aerospace, a company that manufactures composite and metallic aerospace structures, will supply the fuselage and wings for Delta-class vehicles. The company, Bell Textron, will be responsible for the production of the control services as well as the feathering system that raises the tail booms for re-entry and lowers them again for landing. They will deliver these components to Virgin Galactic, which will handle final assembly at a new factory in Mesa, Arizona, that the company announced in July that it would establish in the fall. It is also expected that Virgin will remain responsible for the overall design of the system, as well as for its testing of it. It is important to note that the decision to select Bell Textron and Carbon Aerospace is part of a larger effort by the company to diversify its supply chain. The company has announced in July that it had selected Aurora Flight Sciences, a subsidiary of Boeing, to develop components for airplanes that will be the carriers for Spaceship 2 and the Delta-class space planes, taking over the role of the White Knight 2 aircraft that served as a carrier for Spaceship 2. Virgin will handle the final assembly of those planes at an existing company factory in Mojave, California. For now, Virgin Galactic envisions that the Arizona factory will be able to produce as many as six Delta-class vehicles each year. As early as late 2025, the vehicles will be able to launch revenue-generating payload flights and private astronaut flights will begin in 2026. As of now, the company plans to make a business out of flying paying tourists to suborbital space, and it wants flights to ramp up starting in 2023. This year, Virgin Galactic aims to start sending customers to space three times per month. Currently, the cost of a ticket on Virgin Galactic spacecraft is around $250,000. However, the company has stated that it plans to lower the cost of tickets eventually to around $40,000 to $50,000, making it more accessible to a wider range of people. It is estimated that the journey on board of the VSS Unity lasts for around 90 minutes, during which time passengers will experience several minutes of weightlessness. A spacecraft like this is designed to carry six passengers and two pilots, making it a more intimate and personalized experience for each individual. And in order to purchase a ticket on Virgin Galactic, interested individuals can visit the company's website and sign up for updates when tickets become available. While the company has not yet set a firm date for when it will begin accepting paying customers, it is expected that this will happen at some point in the near future. If you are interested in traveling to space, you may also want to consider the Space Rider space plane from the European Space Agency. There are several features designed into the Space Rider designed to make it a reusable vehicle capable of carrying scientific payloads and passengers to low Earth orbit and returning them safely back to Earth after their journey. It should be noted that, unlike Virgin Galactic spacecraft, which is designed for short suborbital flights, the Space Rider is capable of staying in orbit for several weeks at a time, making it a more flexible space travel option for the longer term. It can carry up to 800 kilograms of cargo and is designed to be launched on a Vega C rocket. Despite the fact that the ESA has not yet announced a price for a Space Rider ticket, it is expected to be significantly more expensive than what Virgin Galactic will be offering. However, the Space Rider product offers a more immersive and long-lasting space travel experience. In addition, it is more likely to offer opportunities for scientific research and experimentation during the trip. In order to purchase a ticket on the Space Rider, interested individuals will likely need to go through a rigorous screening process and meet certain physical and medical requirements. It has still not been announced when tickets will become available or how many passengers will be able to travel on each flight as of yet. Both Virgin Galactic and the European Space Agency are working towards making space travel more accessible to the general public, and it is expected that in the near future, more companies and organizations will begin offering similar services in the same way. As technology advances and becomes more affordable, it is likely that space travel will become a more common form of tourism and scientific research. Aside from the experience of space travel itself, Passengers on these flights can expect to receive a wide array of amenities and perks as part of the substantial amount of money they will be spending on these flights. For instance, Virgin Galactic has announced that, as part of the preparation for their journey, passengers will receive astronaut training, including centrifuge training and zero-gravity flights, as part of their training. As a bonus, 
passengers can expect to receive the personal attention and service from their pilots and crew members, as well as special souvenirs and commemorative items to remind them of their flight. Although space travel remains a relatively new and expensive endeavor, it is expected to become more accessible and affordable in the coming years as technology advances. But for those interested in experiencing weightlessness and seeing the Earth from a unique perspective, companies like Virgin Galactic and the ESA offer exciting opportunities for the future. So, would you be interested in taking part in this space tourism project? Tell us in the comments. And that's it for today's video. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to press that bell icon. It's absolutely free. We'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, see ya.